want these? Okay. Want these? No. Yeah, grab these too. So that's what I'm kind of. Sawdust today. What is that? Three, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve. Okay, slight change of plans here. We're making the doors, that's still on task. But we're gonna go ahead and just use the wood that's here. This is ash, it's been sitting out here. Like, there's not even spacers or stickers on this wood, and it seems fine, um, but it's been cut for a number of months now. These were originally intended for the concrete forms for the house site. And we still intend to form them before we pour the concrete. But we're still a few months off from doing that, yeah? Mm -hmm. We have to wait until there's the risk of frost is gone, a deep frost anyway. And then we will do that. So instead of milling another log and making this dimension board, we're just going to use this dimension board and then whatever we take from this pile, which is going to be most of it, we'll mill again. We have four doors to make. I guess let's go get started. We good? I love how our plan just evolves. We do change our plan a lot. Yeah, keep you on your toes. I feel like we just saved two days of work. Eleven one. Eleven foot one. I like pulling mag. I know, I'm trying to hold it on here and just keep yeah, yanking it. We're shy a sixteenth of an inch. So, they're the same. <laughs> Alright, six foot six it is. Well, Meg is uh, doing the caulk. What's she doing? Oh, she did both sides on this one, okay. But either a bird flew by, or Meg had a little whoopsie doopsie. Not really sure. Let's see, yeah, she did over here. Meg. Yeah? How's it going? Okay. Did you notice my whoops? Was that a bird or was that you? No, did you notice on the building? Yeah. You did? How could you miss it? There was a clog. There was a clog? Yeah. And I squeezed it and it went... <laughs> What's your technique here, Meg? Um, move quickly because once oh, see it just relieve the pressure. Well, I did. This is relieved. Mm. Okay. See, you get it going. Goodness. <laughs> Definitely not a how-to. <laughs> you get it going. This is a how we. And then if you're gonna stop, look. <laughs>
Hey, my welds have gotten significantly better. Well, my copying will get significantly better too. Uh, one could hope. <laughs> Thought you were the caulk queen, Meg. I'm rusty. It's been a while. You're something. Oh my god, look at this. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Look at how it... Look, look, I'll go quick. It'll still look like crap. Okay, well, <clears throat> in the meantime, I'm making doors. Should I just make these two and then move and then redo the steps again? Or However you want to do it, John. I think I want to move on to the next steps here. I'm going to rip those other boards. All look, right, Meg. No, show, show how good it is now. Okay. Just don't look at the very top where it's all messy. So good, guys. So good. Okay. What, are you just coming back with the finger and... Yeah. But I learned the hard way, you kind of have to, you can't do a whole bottle and then go back with your finger because it, uh... Yeah. Dries. All right, go ahead then. Let's see. Nobody's gonna know. It's gonna be great. Okay. Right, I'm gonna go get back to it. Meg, keep up the work. <laughs> You're such a <laughs> Oh boy. I have two dozen boards here of ash. Those are ripped down to five and a half. And these need to be ripped down. They are cut to the right length, but not the right width. So I'm going to go take care of that real quick. And um, then we're going to start putting these doors together. These are the first two doors. So the side that would be closest this way. You'll see. Let's get to it. Do you have to be careful not to go too deep with that? Yeah, it can go, go through. through the other side. Should probably put a piece of tape as a marker on there. Well, like professional barn door builders now. What do you think, John? I'm just following what you tell me to do. You're doing a good job. It's a perfect X. Yeah, we measured. John, I like it. Let's Where's... go hang it up. Okay. I think we should put the hinges on the post and then put the door where it's going. A okay. little shim underneath it and then attach the door. We got to cut them too. We got to cut these hinges. Where are they? Right here. I should have bought one size smaller. So we're going to... Um, it's not going to be very difficult. Does this mark the spot? All right, we gotta what? basically. You mean the X? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get it in and then rest the bottom on the railroad tie. Okay. Okay. We'll just tabletop it yeah, in. Yeah, we just gotta. We'll shimmy it in there. Yes, you can. You got it, girl. No, nope. come in more. Put it on the tie. There you go. Get that far end. There you go. Come on. I'm, tr I'm trying to adjust. Waiting for you to get up top. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's so much heavier than it looks. Oh, Robin. It's on the right side here. 
gonna go to you. Get it to the outside over there. Okay. So. Without it falling. Just do what you need to do. If I need to push out, you tell me. All right. Push out. From the bottom. Yeah. More. Yep. Okay. Stop. All right. Okay. Perfect. Good. Now it just needs to be lifted this way. Okay. In order for it to. All right. Get away from there. I got it. But the bottom looks great. Okay. You can shim whatever you need. I think you should try to lift that and I'll try to put these yeah. underneath. There you go. Good. How do I use that? Um, okay. Hold on. Looks good. We are where we need to be. Good, good, and good. Making your own doors is challenging. Those look pretty nice. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah, be my drill holder. Okay. You hold that, oh, then we'll switch. Alright. This shirt is really annoying. Sorry, Chris, I know they gave this to me, but it the hood is always here like a parrot. <laughs> it's never on the left. Watch, I'll put it back here, like where it should be going. You'll see. Mm -hmm. You know what the capital of our homestead is? Mud. Mud. That looks like it's gonna swing. Yeah, it's I don't know swing. about this ground in front of it though. Well, well, well. Oh. There you go. Oh. <laughs> looks like a straight door too. That's that really is good. pretty cool, man. Look at that. That's great. Can you give me credit on that the wedges were the perfect tool for that job? Meg, I think the wedges were the perfect tool for that job. <laughs> they were. They worked great. So, so we don't over torque this door, we should put a stop on the inside, I think. Yeah. Right, right here, just a little something. Yeah. That looks really good. Oh, it looks excellent. Yeah? Yeah. Ready? Nice. I'm shocked that worked. And that's a heavy door. Yeah. That's that was a, a very, really heavy, very door. heavy door. Hey, Meg. Hey. Hey, Meg's not happy. It's cold. It's cold. All right, here's what we're doing, guys. Gutter. It's going to start on the far side. It's going to end up on this side. Downspout's going to be right there. And for this side, it's going to be the same thing. Downspout's going to end up here i don't have much of a fascia or soffit so downspout goes down there it's going to go into the ground i'm gonna lay a line for the slope Ow. oh man my beard hair getting stuck in the zipper that doesn't feel good okay we're gonna start in this corner this will be the high side low side will be over there so all we did we painted this we just Put this first well, actually two coats of paint because the gutters go in here rain coming tomorrow hopefully we get these done in time so you have to unscrew it just a little bit oh that's the problem I didn't even think of that. there we go nice 
it. Yeah, once you unscrew it a little. Yeah. Pro tip. Meg's pro tip. All right, good deal. Can you do the next one too, like that? Start about a foot in. Well, let's get, get that this one up. One up and... okay. Team lift. <laughs> oh! Just in time, John. Hope so. We'll rain tomorrow. All right, just going for it, huh? Yep. Why are they K style? I have no idea. Maybe a guy named Kevin invented them. They don't look like a His name? Was Kevin? What movie? Minions. Minions. Well, you can do this one at the end, and then I don't think I out. want to. I want to do these. Just keep going. We're down gonna the get line. our spring caught. Are you good there? Yeah, I'm good. Here, let it come down. Fine. All right, it's, it's loose. Yeah. Oh. Oh dear. Dude, what the hell happened there? You went way too far. Oops. No. You forgot to paint that I one? I missed one. <laughs> I had Meg paint these ends on the little battens on the roof. And I come over, she's got her finger like a little kid. She's finger painting them. It was faster than the brush. All right, that's going to look good, I think. So, you know, I'm hesitating saying this because this is maybe one of those things that I should know. But I just discovered a feature on this drill that I never knew about before. So this little screw mode, so it's got three, three intensity levels. The first one, can you grab you the camera? You need to show it closer. Come closer. They can't see Well, I want to show an example of it. Yeah, we'll show the button first. Okay, Come so here. this XR um, impact driver, the 20 volt from DeWalt, has these modes on it. Can you focus on that, Med? Med. <laughs> hey, Med. I don't know who Med is, <laughs> but I can. Can you see it? Yeah. All right. So it's got one, two, and three. Three is crazy mode. Two is normal mode. And one is like, you know, wake up. I thought one was just for driving some simple screws in without stripping them. Like it's almost got a clutch feature, but that's not all it does. It back actually, up. if Honey, you... Back up. I'm just looking at your chest. What's wrong with my chest? Go ahead. Good. Now. So le level one is sissy mode, definitely. So you won't strip your screw or do anything. But if you screw it in and then it kind of uh, limits out and it stops on you, keep holding the trigger and it will go into a slow impact mode. I never knew this. I've used this thing for thousands of hours, probably, right? I don't know about that. Hundreds of hours, <laughs> dozens of hours. <laughs> a lot, a lot of screws. You've definitely done thousands of screws. So anyway, I'm going to hold the trigger the whole time and drive this one in. Watch how it behaves. <laughs> See, it goes into, it hesitates and then it goes into an impact mode like two seconds later. And it'll continue going tat, 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 a slow impact. So you could actually control the uh, impact driver a little bit. Well, I got to show it somehow. Right, Carmen? Right, Carmi? You stretching? I'm glad I wear my best clothes. Guys, they, they sell seams you're supposed to go right up against these two like that and then they have a seam that just straps around it and you pinch it in and everything that 
I don't like them. Okay, we use it for the shed. They leak. I don't like it, and I'm cheap. I don't want to buy. I think they're eight dollars each. Each seam is ridiculous. So, I thought I'd make my own, but then all I did on this end was pry away this side a little bit, and they actually fit together nicely. Let's pull that away from the wall a little bit. Get these to slide in. Oh, back up a little, Meg. Right there. All right, Meg, give it a little slide. There you go. So we're gonna, how far should we go? About inch and a half or so? Keep going. Right there will be good. So keep in mind your water flow. Our water's coming from that way. It's gonna just hop over the ledge and continue on down. I'm gonna come in here after the fact with some silicone and uh, fill in that. But from looking this way, it doesn't even look like this, the gutter has a seam. And then I have a pair of pliers here with some tape on them. I'm just gonna fold over this. I'm gonna fine tune it, but you get the point. All right, we'll come back around and get everything Exactly right, but looking from looks good from here. Yeah, that one little top section I gotta morph it a little bit, but it'll don't look bad. Looks like a seam. That's not bad. Maybe just to keep it tight, throw in a little sheet metal screw against there, and then fill in the rest with some uh, the proper silicone for to resist the heat, and you'll be good to go. I mean, I like it. Could fiddle with this a little bit more, but anyway, do what you want to do. That's how I'm doing it. Right, Mick? Yeah, my arm's really tired. Do you think you could? <laughs> What'd you say? My arm's really tired. Uh huh. You want me to screw it in now, Mick? Is do that what you're saying? Do this one down here. Huh? Do this one down here. Well, I'm going to do this one just to make you wait one more minute. better than if you bought the seam and did the whole glue kit. Yep. Because like when you have a seam, it puts it on either side because it's, it's just the strap covering the gap. So you wind up with a seam from both sides. Yeah, I don't like those seams, and they're stupid expensive. It's where they make their money. Out here in the rain. Let's see what's going on here. Ugh, it's pretty gross out here, guys. All right, well, that's a good sign. And we finished the actual work on the gutters. Let's see. Nothing's standing. It's, it's going. So that's good. Let's see if that seam is working out too. There's a seam and I don't see it leaking. So that's good. And the other one's down there. That's not leaking either. Good. Looks like it's working good. We're laying out the, the planks here and what I wanna do, you gotta check your end grains here. So this board like this, the grain is going kind of like a rainbow and this one is more like quarter sawn, but it does have rain, rainbow grain this way, which means you wanna flip this one over so that your grain goes you know, up, down, and then up, and then down. You wanna alternate it, and that way your door, when you're done, and when you're done clamping it, it doesn't turn out to be a big wave after everything dries up a bit. 
So that's a way to neutralize the natural bend in the, in the lumber. So we're going to do that. And then we just made these cross ties. Let me show you these. First step, we clamp everything together and then we put a whole bunch of lag screws in these. And what we did was we cut a 45 degree angle on the end here. That's where the doors come together. So if we have a door up here, up there already, and there's a door here, these two angles come into each other because when you're closing a door like that, if you don't chop this little corner off, they will rub and it won't allow you to close the doors easily. So that's what that little angle is for. Um, other than that, we just got to get a long clamp, clamp these things together, get it all straight, and then start putting some lag screws into it. 12, 24, 36 lag screws and washers per door. All right. So it's 144 total. Let's do it. Mm, flip. This is flip these flipper. Two. I meant switch, not flip. Well, this one's correct. All right. Down. And uh, this one. Flip this one. This one needs to flip. And then Ooh. we're good. Right? So we got down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down up, down, up, down, up. 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 All right, that should give you a relatively, okay. relatively straight door when you clamp everything together here. Yeah. You gotta push that board in. See how it's coming out? Yep. Yep. Running out of ink. Hold on. We'll be fine. They no, won't. That's exhausting. Yeah, exhausting. Ready? I'm tight. Go ahead. Keep it, keep it, keep it there. Hold on. Come on. Did you feel that manly sound? Ready? Who am I? Yeah. One time we're doing this with our daughter, Autumn. She holds up the line like... Meg and I are like, Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. And she's like... <laughs> she would not let the thing go. You still good on the line there? Yeah. Can I have a washer, Mick? Yeah. You have it going? Yeah. Yeah, I finally got into a rhythm with these things. Um, I was insetting some of them. Well, all of them. But the two inch bolt, I mean, this is an inch and a half thick. Two inch bolt, it just wasn't enough grip to get into this board. This board's an inch, so I mean, I inset it less than a half. So, you know, it all works. But anyway, so they're inset now, and I think they look fine. Tightens up all the gaps, it forces everything together. Yeah, so now we're going through and we're just doing a one inch spade. Taking about a half inch out of there. could see when you get in there and it really starts grabbing it pulls up this board and this gap just disappears I'm trying my best not to get any sawdust in there nice and tight you Mick
but I do want to finish. So we're going to do it by hand then. We have three dead batteries. Oh. hammering in by hand. I don't know. It's just something uh, therapeutic. Alright. Got my helper here. Right, Clara? Yep. Up, kiddo. Clara decided to come out and help and paint the doors for me. So this door, I've l usually I, I leave it open, um, not like all the time. But see what's happening on the top? It's just getting water stains from being open like this and being exposed to well the, the elements. So good job, Clara. That looks really good. Thank you. Yep. Clara wants to help me uh, paint the house, and I said, you need some practice, so. Okay. And that's what she's doing now. Good job, kiddo. Thank you. All right, this isn't actually paint, it's called primer. So primer, what it does, is that you put it between paint and the surface that you want to have the color or the paint. And primer has a different, it's made up differently than paint is. So you can put primer on normal, just bare wood like this, and it'll stick nicely to it. But then when you put paint on primer, it'll stick to the primer. So the way it goes, the paint sticks to the primer, and the primer sticks to the wood. The paint has a hard time sticking to just wood. Mm -hmm. So you need a helper. That's what primer is. one so it fits a bit nicer on our trim these are a little too long so we're cutting off that bit right Mick right. works well yeah
Okay, wash your hand now. Slide it. For you. So. Okay. Let me open this further. Can you push the top out to me? I got my hand here. You can't push it too far. So. All right. Whoa. Right there. All right. That looks good. Okay. I say let's shimmy up. Like overcompensate that. Lift it a little bit. So when we put the pressure on the hinges, we'll be all right. Now I could just okay. get the I could get the skid steer and just just back drag some of this for the swing. I mean, can you argue with that? No, that's great. There's about a quarter inch, maybe, gap, yeah. if that. And then on one of them, we could just put a plate Yeah. to cover okay. up that big gap. Yeah. So you close one, then the other, and then it's tight. Yeah. All right. And they're not, that wasn't all the way in. This okay. is still short. All right. So once they're totally closed, it might even be closer. That's great. Uh, awesome uh, rescue mission the other day so I sheared off one of the heads on these so I had you need nine per hinge set per door so we had eight and I had one more bolt like this but it didn't have this this collar up here this like reinforced collar it just had threads all the way up to the head here and um, so anyway I drove it in there, snapped off the head, and they're like, oh no, what are we going to do? And I pounded in a socket, a four millimeter socket, which kind of morphed this into the shape of the socket. And then I just took my impact and uh, just reversed it and the bolt came right out. But that's a valuable lesson. If you're using impact on these lag bolts, definitely get this thicker neck here. I don't know what that's called, but... Um, I noticed the difference. The only one that didn't have that reinforced neck was uh, the one that sheared off and broke. So Anyway. Right there, Meg. Mm. Ooh, like that. See that one? I guess it was mixed in the bin. Versus that one. This one's gonna break. This one's a lot stronger. I got one with a short neck, Meg. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, this is door number three out of four. And we figured out. We've also made those doors on the shed this way, but this door, uh, we wanted to show you how to make this X perfectly. And uh, here's the way we do it. So step number one, get your board. Meg, where's the board? Actually, we don't even need a board yet. We're just going to measure from that corner to this corner, inside corner. 
So offset at 10 meg, pay attention as to what side you're putting your measurement on. What side are you measuring off yeah, of, Meg? This side. side? Okay. Why is it all twisty? We have on nine, not 10. Oops. Okay, you got it at 10? Now I do. All right, Meg's mark's at 10. I'm at 95 and a quarter. So we are gonna go cut a trim board, one of these boards, at 95 and a quarter. No, Actually, I... minus 10, 85, 85 and a quarter. quarter. <laughs> gotta remember your 10 offset. All right, Meg, let's go do that. 85 and a quarter. Hey guys, real quick, pay attention to your rainbow grain, okay? You don't want this side up, you want the other side up, and I'll show you why. See that top trim on the shed, the gray? See how it's kind of like waving out a little bit? That's because the uh, we have a concave grain placement. That board should have put, been put the other way around. We just had to add a bunch of caulk to it. It's, it's just something I stare at and complain about. Here. Rainbow, make it a rainbow. Look at that beautiful board. All right, Meg, find the center for us. Okay. So now Meg is going to, this should be about a six inch board, correct? Yes, it's. All right, give me a mark at three, Meg. There's our three and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Now, Meg and I are gonna take that mark right into the corner. Meg's gonna make sure hers is good. It's good. Good? Mm -hmm. All right, now take a speed square or take your carpenter square and eyeball your angle. Now the tip should go right to that mark. And then you really only have to like butt it up against one. You should be at 90 after that. That's another good tip. Mark, Mark, yeah, Mark. Hey, Mark. I'm calling, what am I calling you this episode? Med, Mark, what is going on here? If you're working with a buddy and you don't want to figure out after the fact, like whose corner is whose, because the board's been moved around, put yourself a little mark, 39 degrees. Let's try this angle at 39. What happened to that three? I don't know. All right, let's, let's go see. All right, we're gonna go to 39 degrees. Right, here we go. All right, that's 39 degrees. Now, this other cut is gonna be 90, so we'll do that next. Now that angle is gonna be against the fence, and our other cut's gonna be at 90 degrees, right there. And there's our little mark, and we know that's Meg's side, right there. All right, Meg, let's see how we did. That's the John side. Like, like a glove? glove. <laughs> <laughs> like a glove. That's a very tight angle there. So, very good. All right, we're gonna screw this down. We'll show you the next one too because the next one has an additional step. All right, while Meg's doing the pilot holes, I'm gonna load up the impact driver here. With, I got a couple T20s, this is what we're doing the trim with. These are inch and a quarter. All right, I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna put it on sissy mode. Meg, can you wait a second with yeah. that? All right, so this is a good application for this because you don't wanna go berserk into here and then like send this screw head well into the other side and uh, split things. So we're doing a pilot hole so nothing splits, but watch the behavior here. So we're on one with the screw. Now it's gonna limit out, and then I'm gonna continue holding the trigger, watch. Now, I don't wanna do that all day. It's just a cool feature I thought I'd share. I'm gonna keep it on number two mode, because I feel like I'm, I'm pretty good at this thing. And just kinda, Kind of shimmy it down there. But that's how it behaves. I like number two mode, Meg. All right, Matt, or Meg. You're, you're not Meg. Now I got Met. Met Mark and what was the other one? I don't know. 
As long as I'm not calling you something weird like Victoria, I think we'll be all right. <laughs> you haven't hit my head recently, have you? <laughs> all right, Meg, offset 10. So we're gonna do the same approach on this one. 10 on your left side. Yeah. Okay. We're going right at the 95, so 85 inches, Meg. Even? 85 on the nostril. Carmen, what did I tell you about rolling in deer poop? Carmen, come here. Carmen, come. You could come too, Maddie. Carmen. Carmen's had a good day, look at her nose. She's got a muddy nose. That means she's been hunting for moles. <laughs> you too, Maddie. What are you doing there? You can't be doing that. You're too pretty to dig in the dirt with your nose. Yeah, you're a good girl. All right, we're gonna line up our little mark in the corner. I'm lined up. You lined up? All right, there's our angle. Sorry. All right, so we're gonna do 39 degrees. That's 39. Here, we can mark it. That's 39, right there. And then, okay, here's the other step. So, leave it right there. Try not to bump it. And we come over here and get yourself a straight edge. Meg, you want to line that up perfectly? Can you reach? I can't reach to mark it, I don't think. All right, I'll mark it. Got it? So all you're doing here, guys. Hold on. No, we're, there you go. Good? Yeah. We're gonna mark there and then do the same thing on the other cut. And you'll end up with a little triangle piece when you're done. That looks good. No, it's a diamond piece. Sorry, what did I say, triangle? Triangle. All right, now, and the other thing is, if you just cut, so this is our waist. If you just cut that and like have a piece there and a piece there when you come back, you're gonna have a hard time, you're gonna have to run a straight edge here to make sure they line up. Get yourself a little mark on this piece and this piece. And then you kinda can, you'll have- A guide. A guide as to where to put the cut end so that it, when you look down, it looks nice and straight on the other side. All right, let's go cut these and put them in place. I really don't like just eyeballing things when I cut it, guys. I mean, be precise. You got all this stuff sitting here, you might as well use it. This little speed square is more than just marking a, a 90 cut line, I mean, use it. All right, we're good there. So we're at 11 degrees. That's where I remembered the 11. All right, so come over here and we go 5, 10, 11. Boom. And we cut. There's your diamond. There's your diamond, my lady. Oh, thanks, honey. Oh, is that everything you wanted? Okay. All right, now let's go to, let's do our 39. 39. Man, I did your side good, Meg. Oh, we got the zoomies. Oh boy. One point, Carmen. You know, I think I'm pushing the uh, pushing the limits of where you're supposed to put your hand, guys. I don't know. I, you know, that's a no high five sticker. That's what that means. No high fives while you're cutting. Okay, you have to wait, wait till you're done cutting. No high fives. I'm ready? Go ahead, Meg. How's it fit? Ooh, spicy. Nice. Looks really good. I don't know if I could make my side any better. Nice, except for this. I'm sure the screws will hold it down. They will. And that's how you do a perfect X, guys. Let's get it screwed in. wanted to show you the the lovely lines here look at that guys 
So one other thing I want to point out, when you have two doors side by side, French doors of these X's here, so you have one going this way, when they're side by side, have the other one the opposite way. And I'll go show you real quick how it looks. All right, the right door here, see the full size board here? And then on the left one, it goes the other way. So it's kind of like making a V and then your crosses go the opposite direction. one up I think it's funny the first one took us two weeks the second one maybe four days the third one maybe a day and a half the fourth one one hour yep we got much faster at the process but we also added this little piece this overlap on both right doors so that it overlaps the two and it overlaps the seam. And uh, we're really happy with the way they turned out. Yeah. And it's hot in there. Let's go in there and see. Let's check it out. Kind of cool today. It's only like 55. Let's see what it is in here. I wish I had a thermometer. Ooh, All yeah, right. it's, it's warm in here. Whoa. It's definitely like 75 already. We just started closing the doors too. Yeah. Okay, sun sunglasses are on in the in the kiln here. What are we calling it, Meg? The solar sauna? It, no. It's it's the wood, <laughs> the wood sauna. sauna. <laughs> the wood sauna. Okay, but look from the inside, guys. Look at the doors. It came out really good. What do you say, Meg? I think I think it's great. We need to do some hardware, like some poles and, and a way to keep these tight against each other. So we're gonna figure that out. We'll probably make some for it, but. Um, one more episode probably to wrap up this before it gets into action. Uh, I got to do the ridge cap, I have to do some more secure down with the metal panels on the top, but we have the electric to run and not to mention the fans to install so that we're moving all of this hot air in and out. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to wrapping it up and getting this puppy in action. You're sweating. Look how hot it is in here. Yeah. Cool. It's not like a nervous sweat. Like that, that's a genuine... I don't, let's get a thermometer. You want it? Sure, go get it. What is it out there? Here, 57.2 Fahrenheit. These weren't even. We let it acclimate inside here. It's been at 80 for about a minute now. So it's 80 degrees in here. And what was it out there? Um, 57, I think. A lot cooler. They'll probably warm up because so they just I think, shut the doors. I think it's going to do the job. 
Well, I'm sweating, so I'm sure the boards will sweat too. <laughs> Woo! It's like that sensation when you go from the hot tub to the pool. Yeah. What a stupid holiday. Groundhog Day? Don't you think? Mm, yep. I mean, it's like a big rat they pull up, they wake up early in the morning. That's just really sad. It's still sleeping. Get up, we all want you to see um, you your face. Out, uh, yeah. It's pointless. I don't know where that holiday came from. They do it in Pennsylvania. His name is Punxsutawney Phil. Is he a punk? No, it's that's the name of the town, Punxsutawney. Well, people who live there must be punks to wake up a groundhog. It's kind of sad. You think so? Yeah. That old groundhog will bite their faces off. I'm trying to sleep here. Leave me alone for crying out loud. <laughs>